cut my hand. Owie. What's up guys? Lumberjack here again. And I've been waiting for this day for a long time. We're gonna destroy some shit. So what I've got in my hands here, everybody knows the Fisker's Axe. Everyone with a garden and a shrub and a camera on YouTube has made a review of these axes, hatchets, the splitting malls. And it's pretty much the same thing. People say it's a good axe for the money. Um, a lot of the survivalists, bushcrafters, stuff like that, uh, old school guys, they just swear by the wood handles. And I gotta say, I'm in that school of thought as well because the whole problem that people have with these is generally that the handle is irreplaceable. Now Fiskers does have a lifetime warranty, I think. It was on this sticker of the axe when I bought it. I'm pretty sure it said lifetime warranty on the handle um, from normal use. <clears throat> but that doesn't help you if you're out in the bush somewhere and this thing breaks and you gotta lash it to a stick or something. In my mind, it'd be a lot easier to whittle a new handle and refit a wood handle into an axe with an eye than try and do anything with this. So we're not gonna chop anything today. This axe is almost brand new. I have chopped down one tree with this and I've cut a few little saplings. I've had it for about three weeks, but it's basically brand new. I have not had one overstrike with it. I chopped down one eight inch poplar and uh, I have not impacted. There's one little scuff on the handle here, but I have not had an overstrike and had any impacts on the front face of the handle. The um, neck, <laughs> I'm sure there's a term for that, but it's not coming to me right now. So what we're gonna do is beat the crap out of this. This is a sugar maple. Uh, it is completely stripped of bark, uh, porcupine damage. This is porcupine feeding damage. I'm gonna show you in a second. So I don't mind beating on this. It's a nice hard tree. And this is the chopping ax. This is not a splitting head. This is a chopping head. It is meant for chopping down trees or chopping up logs, not splitting. So we are going to strike with it in that fashion. So I'm just going to give you guys a closer look at this stripped tree so you know I'm not just beating up trees for no reason. I'm probably going to come back and hack this down with a chainsaw later at some point. So let's see how tough these Fiskers handles actually are in normal use. I know Fiskers, I think Fiskers has a video of them running these over with a tank sideways. Prop it up on something like that, run it over and the handle flexes. I've seen it done with a tractor before, um, but that isn't really the test you want to do, I think, for something that's going to, it almost looks like it has a seam here, and uh, overstrikes are going to try and force this lamination apart, I think. So we're going to see how long it lasts, if I can break it. Well, we're going to break it, but we're going to see if I can break it by hand. So I'm going to show you this stripped tree. That'll be our tree lesson for today, and then we're going to beat the crap out of this axe. So as you can see, this small sugar maple here has been completely stripped by porcupines. This is last year's damage, I believe, we're looking at. And if you can see it in the sun up here, it is completely stripped. Whenever you see a tree like this in the forest, it is porcupine feeding damage. And uh, the, the vascular system of the tree is in the outer layers of the bark, the phloem and the xylem and the cambium. So this will kill this tree, it's basically dead. Perfect little test subject for us to beat on. Here comes the train, I gotta turn the camera off. Chop well. Let's see how well it breaks. I don't know if I'm gonna have to put gloves on or not, but this is probably gonna hurt my hand. Oh yeah, definitely gonna need some gloves. Might not last long. Wow, you can really feel that in the hands. Not a mark. Full. Need two pairs of gloves. Nope, looking like I've only got one pair. Oh my god, that's so painful. Oh. 
denting the tree. And there is not a mark on this handle yet. That's, that's a tough handle. I'm not tired, that just fucking hurts. <laughs> I can see it is actually delaminating around the head a little bit. You can just see a little crack forming in here. A few more. I have to grip this very, very loose because it hurts like hell. Try some backwards. Now this, this is bouncing. Not that I recommend you try this, but if you do, this will bounce back and hit you and that will cut you deep. So be aware of that. If you're ever swinging one of these backwards, it is very, very bouncy. Ah, oh, jeez. I've heard people say that the weather, if you leave these out over winter, the rain, the water will destroy this handle a little bit. But I'll tell you what, this is brand new. I have never had an ax, a wood handle or a polymer ax that has taken that many strikes right on the... So this is, I was striking right along here. You can just barely see some discoloration maybe where I've been hitting about this area. That is still in perfect condition. I, I've probably done that 30 or 40 times now. The back is fine. This is, I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's just a bit of a crack there. And I don't even think that's a flaw. I think that's just knocking some dust out of a, the seam or something. It's pretty tough. I'll keep going for as long as I can, but my hands are sore. I actually just had a little brainstorm. I don't know if I'm gonna, there's a hydro tower over there. Maybe we'll go beat this off the bottom of it a little bit if this fails. Oh yeah. Oops. I cannot, definitely can't swing this as hard as I can swing an ax at all. Just destroy my hands. That is one tough handle. I gotta say, I'll still probably be a wood handle axe fan after this. Fisker's impressing me right now. Oh, my hands are gonna be sore tonight. Sore, sore, sore. That is just taking a beating. To, the tree's coming apart. Oh my god! This is like a lifetime of overstrikes. Oh, if you're any good with an axe, anyways. Wow. I know Wrangler Star, another YouTuber, he hates Fiskers. He makes fun of them. He's a big uh, old tool guy. He likes restoring old axes. He makes fun of them. He makes videos of using these as doorstops. If you don't want to spend $200 on an axe and you need something that will actually do work, it's pretty good. It's pretty hard to beat. I did not, I honestly did not think it was going to at least 
be in this kind of condition. Like it's still brand new. Oh my god. Wow. I don't think I'm going to be able to break this. In all honesty, I don't think there is any way I could intentionally break this by hand. It's, the head looks like it might be moving around a little bit more in there. But it's still rock solid. We are going to break this before the day is over. I have plans for that. I came out here to break an axe handle and I'm going to break an axe handle. No sense in leaving a job half done. I think my hands are going numb. It's starting to hurt less. I'm working with the, the rebound. Holy shit. That is not going anywhere. Let's go hit it off some steel. Okay. This is like five by five by three eighths angle. I'm gonna hit it right on the corner here. Now, I am not doing this to damage Hydro One's tower at all. The only reason I'm hitting this tower is because it was nice and close to a big piece of steel, and this is not going to damage it at all. So hopefully this doesn't hurt too much. Wow. Well, it did damage it a little bit. Sorry, Hydro. That actually cut the steel. Well, that is obviously doing some damage. So now that I've got a few good marks in there, take her back over to the tree. That would definitely, definitely break their handle. You can see, I hope you can see, three little marks from the overstrikes there. Yeah. Did a little bit of damage to it on the steel. Obviously that's not normal use for an axe, but surprisingly you can see the little ding in the, the corner of the head right there, right there. It was a little bit uh, too close with my first swing. It actually, it felt like it planted right in the steel, and that's the market left. So I thought these heads were fairly soft, the Fisker's axe heads. But uh, yeah, you could probably break a chain with that or something if you had to. Anyways, let's head back to our smashing tree. All right, so the steel mucked up our handle a little bit for us. Now that it's got a few weak points, let's see. Uh, see if it can take more of these. I'm going to give her maybe 30, maybe 50 more if I can. And uh, then I'm probably going to say I've had enough because this is painful. Nothing. It feels a little bit like the handle might be giving more when I hit. But I think it's the tree giving. Wow. She is tough. Yeah, it's not giving any indication it's going to break there. It really locks the fingers up. Early onset arthritis, here I come. Fiskers, you certainly make tough axe handles. I don't know any wood handle that would take that many impacts and not have a mark on it. I don't care if it's hickory, ash, whatever you make it out of. That is tough. Beating on sugar maple too. This is one of the hardest hardwoods in the bush. At least where we are here.
A lot of people call these rock maple. That's another thing. I wish I had some rocks. Beat this on. There's no rocks out here. Oh God. Oh. Okay. One more little go. And then we're going to try something else. God. I can't believe I'm still holding on to this. It hasn't flown out of my hands yet. That's pretty impressive. Way to go, Oscars. Oh, my hands hurt. Oh yeah, felt good. Yeah, right in there. That feels good. Oh, this tree's gonna fall over in a minute. Feels so good. Oh, it's painful. I'm done. I am not going to break this before my hands give out. I'm not swinging at a tree anyways. Time to find out what the Fisker's axe handle is really made of. I think I missed. Oh no, I can see some uh, pellets on there. Seven and a half bird shot. Oh, you guys aren't even looking at me. Seven and a half bird shot, just bounced right off of there. Let's try another one. That got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is awesome. They're not. Shotgun. There's a couple marks there. You can see those. There is no penetration behind them. So the only reason that broke is because I was standing about five yards away and I hit it with the entire, probably all the seven and a half bird shots still in the wad. Here's our head. So you can see it's a pretty thick handle. God, it's like concrete in there. I don't know what that is. Yeah, but the the individual number seven and a half bird shot definitely bounces off it. It's uh maybe I should have stood a little bit further back. Would have been curious to see if it would take number four or I wanted to get the buck shot, but that just it exploded. I hit her dead on. There you have it. Not shotgun proof. So folks, to conclude this very scientific testing, Fisker's axes are not shotgun proof. If you are close enough with light birdshot loads, you will destroy them. Not that anyone would ever expect an axe to be shotgun proof, but I wasn't going to come out here to wreck an axe and not wreck it. That's what I do. So you might be thinking, what a waste of a perfectly good axe. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, I do have further plans for this. I'm going to make another video. I'm going to get this head out of the handle now and we're going to see how hard it is to actually re-handle this. I don't even know what the shape of the head under here is like. I've never seen one before. So we're going to get this out of the, the head out of the handle and try and just um, bushcraft 
bushcraft. <laughs> bushcraft a way to make a wooden handle for this thing again that's semi-functional. I don't know, I'll try and split a stick or cut it out with a saw maybe or something and lash this in between. I, I don't even know what it looks like, but that's a, it's plans for the future. So this is not a waste. I am going to get more use out of this. We're going to make an axe out of it and then maybe I'll hang that on my wall and keep it if it's any good. Probably not though. So thanks again for joining me guys. I hope you enjoyed this, watching me beat the crap out of my hands and then break stuff that I paid for. It's got to be fun for somebody, right, if it's fun for me. <laughs> and it is fun for me. So thanks for your support. There's a tornado over there. Wow. Just a bunch of leaves. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next episode.